Welcome to this very first MapStack live stream. Okay, this is gonna be a really cool video. On a technical level, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going onto the internet, finding some cool open data, preparing that into a map ready format, and then adding that to MapStack to make it available to everyone in the world as an easy to find and easy to use um, web map. As you may have heard, we're gonna be releasing MapStack into public beta in the next couple of weeks. And what we've decided to do as a team is we would like to create a workspace for ourselves inside um, of, of MapStack in order for us to actually use the software in a real world setting, share with you guys um, how we envisage MapStack will be uh, used. And it will also be a, a really cool way to just have some fun with maps and data. Let me show you what a workspace is in MapStack. So in MapStack, a workspace is similar to what a channel is in YouTube or a project is in GitHub. It's a place where you can have a collection of maps that cover a similar topic, theme, or geography. Um, when you have your MapStack account, you can actually make as many workspaces as you want. And each workspace, you can invite other members to come in and collaborate with you in order to uh, you know, add and update the maps that exist within the workspace. So the MapStack team, we want to make the first workspace before we launch and uh, during the launch as well. An idea that I've had in my head is to do house price data. I think this is like a hot topic at the moment because we're in a period of very high inflation globally, higher interest rates, property prices. Uh, people are saying they're at an all time high. Maybe there's a crash coming or a downturn. Um, that's definitely what looks like on the horizon here in the UK. And um, some of the MapStack team are in the US and Canada and Australia and Cambodia. And it seems to be a common story around the world. So I thought that'd be a cool subject to cover. Uh, we can make a workspace with maps of property data from the UK or Australia or any countries. We will I will invite into the workspace um, other team members. You know, it's just me in this workspace at the moment. We'll invite in other team members to join in on the project. And then in future, we might even open it up to people outside of MapStack to come in and collaborate on that workspace with us. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do is actually find some data. So we're going to go searching. So we're going to say UK house price data. And let's see what we find. Um, so UK house price index reports. So it looks like the most up to date data that we can find on this system is actually here the October data. So like I said, it's the 7th of January today when I'm recording this. So it looks like there's a couple of month lag um, on this data. So let's see what we've got. HPress summary for October in HTML formats. Now, um, that's definitely not the format we need. Let's jump in there and see whether, um, so like headline statistics for October, 2022, the average price of a property in the UK is 296,422 pounds. Oh, okay, that's a lot of money. Access the data, here we go. Download the data as CSV files or access it with our UK HBI portal. Okay, so we want data, don't we? So CSV, so what have we got here? Downloads, October 2022. So what we know already is we can download the data from the UK Gov uh, website, but surprise, surprise, it's not in a map ready format. It's available as a CSV. So we're gonna probably have to do some more work in order to get this into a map. Some of you watching this will know what that process is. I'm going to have to do a data join. For those of you who are new to this, you're going to see it for the first time. You're going to... Right, so let's open up this data and let's see what we're working with. So we're going to fire up LibreOffice and oh, it's nice. All right, it's all in the correct tabs. Let's jump in here. What we got? Took a while to open. I'm guessing this is big. It's big. No, no tips for me today. Thank you, LibreOffice. Okay, so what have we got? Date, region name, area code, average price, index SA, 1M chain, 12M chain, sales. All right, so we got a lot. Okay, let's find Bristol. I'm filming this video in Bristol right now. Bristol's my hometown. It's what I'm familiar with, so it'll be easier for me to understand that. So city, there's lots of records. So what we can see here is this data has the house price data for every month since 1995. Okay, so gov.uk, okay, four marks for data disclosure. Okay, this is this is great. You know, we've got like 27 years of data here. This is this is awesome. Uh, but but 
down mark for the way that you presented it to us okay this is this is not great this is um you know what we should have is when i'm downloading this data is some filters like you know what year would you like would you only like the newest data would you like um not the newest data etc etc so um so we can look at city of bristol here so this is actually something just why we're here so this column here d is the average price so we can see that in the city of bristol in 1995 the average house cost 44,387. So that means 50% of houses cost less than that. Okay, now let's go, let's let's go right up to 2022 and see what's happened. We've gone from 44,000 to where are we in the city of Bristol? 362,000. Okay, not quite 10x, but you know, not a million miles away. Um, interesting story. Um, I went with my mum back to the a, a town in Southeast England that I spent the first years of my life. And we did, um, it's a long way from Bristol, went on a road trip with my mum, and we did what I call like a little trip down memory lane. We went and saw my prime, my first school, my first kindergarten, we went and saw the house we lived in. And we also went and look at the first ever house that my mum bought, okay? This house was uh, a detached bungalow in a nice cul-de-sac, three bedrooms, nice part of the town. And she said she bought that house for 15,000 pounds. That was before I was born, so that's, I won't tell you what that year that is, but a long time ago. Uh, 15,000 pounds, okay, which was cheap. But the interesting part was, is she remembered what her salary was at that time and what my dad's salary was. And she said the cost of that house was the equivalent to about two times their annual salary. So you could take your own annual salary and buy a, a nice house. So this isn't the cheapest house in this town. It's probably somewhere in the middle for that, for that town. That's just not possible anymore. It's not possible here in the UK, you know, unless you're, unless you're on mega bucks, who can spend uh, double their annual salary and buy a house for that? You can't do that in Bristol. You definitely can't do it in London, can't do it in Australia, can't do it in Canada. Where, where's left in the world that you can actually do that? You know, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let's get back to the data. So we're going to have to do a bit of data cleanup here. So first of all, it's 63 megs, which is too much, you know, you know what we're going to do actually let's let's try and get that let's try and start with this smaller data so we had this one that was just average price didn't we so let's let's have a go with that also has the same error let's have a look to see what's in there um two. all right average prices so yeah that's much smaller 10 megs and that'd be easier to work with but let's see what let's see what actual data we've got um okay let's open that up Okay, that's a little bit more manageable. So what have we got here? We've got the date of the data. Oh my God, this, this data goes back to like 1968. That is insane. All right, we <laughs> okay, we said the UK was good at open data, but this, this is really, 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 really good. Okay, we're going back like more than 50 years. Um, average house in 1968 in England, 3,400 pounds. Wow. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so what we've got in here, we've got region name, area code, average price, monthly change, annual change, and average price SA. Okay, while I'm on, I've been doing lots of rants today. Here's another rant, okay? So here's the good things about this data that I'll say to gov.uk. I really like human readable column names, okay? So anybody could open this data and know what they mean. We know what date means, we know what region name is. So I was looking at this going, yeah, good job, gov.uk. This is really good, human readable. I don't need a lookup table or some index to figure out what the column, the column headers mean. So it, oh, it's all good right until we get to here, average price SA. What does SA stand for? Okay, so starts here. So I think what I'm gonna do, we only want the October. We just wanna map the newest data. I haven't got time to be mapping every piece of data ever. So let's keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it in a new sheet. Right, this is really slow. Right, there we are. Okay, right, I'm going to copy that. Insert sheet before current, like, okay, <laughs> LibreOffice. Like, who does that? Who puts the new sheet before the one you're currently looking at? After should be the default, okay. <laughs> All right, let's paste this in here. All right, and let's go back and get those headers as well. We'll paste that in the top row. So boom, boom, boom. Here we go. Average price, SA. 
Um, and let's give that a nice human readable name, rename average prices 2022 October. Um, yeah, that's what I need, don't I? October. Okay, so we've got the sheet. Right, so we've scaled it down now. So let's let's have another little look see at what we've got here. So the good thing is we've got this, we've got an area code. Okay, this area code is going to be useful because this isn't map ready data. Um, this is just the tabular data, it has the information. If we're going to map it, we're going to have to find another file that has the geometry for all of these, all of these places in the UK. Um, hopefully we can find that somewhere. And then we're going to have to join it to this table. Now to join it, what we need is in both sets of data, we need a common attribute that we can use to map between the two files. So that's what I think this is going to be good for. So that's cool. But the problem that we have with this, so this data, this data set is very, very strange in two ways. First of all, they've dumped all of the different dates into a single file. This should have been a filter before the download, in, in my opinion. Okay. The second one that's weird is they've mixed uh, boundary types. Okay, so for those of you not familiar with the UK, the UK is made up of four countries, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England. Okay, so what you can see here is the first four rows are countries. All right, let's fill those in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it as red because I don't like that. Okay, and then all of these are what we would call areas, areas in the UK. Um, not all of them are actually southeast. Okay, so the southeast is a region. So we've got regions. So this file is like a hodgepodge of, of, of different of different types. It's got countries, it's got areas, and it's got regions. So if any of you are watching this from the US, I really like working with US data because your your government, the census department, and everything gives uh, in the data they use the names that 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 local people know those areas as. I haven't described that in a good way. You know, if you go to the US, everybody knows, right, this is what state I live in, this is what county I live in, this is what zip code I live in. Uh, and ele electoral precincts, I think, is the other one. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so it's really easy if you're American to work with your open data because they're using the same boundaries that you're already familiar with. The UK doesn't. The UK uses some very strange uh, boundary types. Um, <clears throat> which not everybody knows. Like if I was going to say what my address is here in the UK, I would say, right, I'm in UK, England, Bristol, Clifton, and I would know my postcode. They're the boundaries that I'm familiar with. Okay, but our open data doesn't uh, work like that. So back into this. Uh, do, 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 do. So yeah, so these are the regions here, you see. So the UK is broken up into these regions. And there are one, two, three, oh, I can't remember, London, Southeast, Southwest, I can't remember what they're, what they're all called. So these, oh, there they are. There they are listed. So these are the regions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've already highlighted those countries. So the regions are also in that data. So if we're gonna map a data set, we can't have mixed geometry types like that when we when we map it, we need to have just one. So I'm gonna to have to get rid of these countries. And I'm also gonna to need to have to get rid of these regions. So where were they? I saw them a second ago. So we know there are nine of them. So, so one, two, three, four, five. Yorkshire and the Humber, I'm pretty sure that's not a region. I mean, it is a region. Okay, so luckily they grouped them together in a all right northeast, northwest. Oh, the, <laughs> it's very strange. So we've got countries, and then we've got a lot, a lot of um, Scottish places in Scotland, and then we've got these regions that are here. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and then Tyne and Weir, let's highlight those. We'll put those as orange. Tyne and Weir isn't a region, I don't believe. Okay, right, so we were talking about like difficulty of preparing data earlier. So we had difficulty downloading this file. Um, so that was more difficult than it needed to be. And now the preparation is kind of complicated as well. Like, luckily I'm kind of familiar, you know, I'm 
good at geography. I work with maps a lot. I'm familiar with what these region names are. This would probably be a headache for a lot of people. It's not structured in a way that lends itself to, to being easily worked with. Okay, so what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to take all of this data. I'm going to insert a new sheet after. Okay, I like doing new sheets because this I hate doing undos in spreadsheets. Um, and this one's going to be, we'll call this uh, rename average prices October 2022 October just areas okay we haven't got all the other junk in there so we're going to delete uh, these countries delete rows and then we're going to get rid of these regions Oops. hold shift no, that's wrong Was playing up. I thought I could hold control and get rid of those. So we'll do them in two batches. So that's the first one, delete rows. All right, gone. Um, delete rows. Delete right there. Okay, so we've got this spreadsheet now. Um, I'm going to delete this column as well because I don't know what it means. Average price SA. What's the point in having data in there if I don't know what it is? Get rid of that. Gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export that sheet. How do I export one sheet? Uh, maybe I could just go file, um, export. No, I want to save it as HTML. Maybe I just do a save as. Right. So we're going to save this. Save. Um, use text CSV format. Warning the document average prices to into areas. Only the active sheet was saved. Good, because that's what I want. All right. So let's see how big that file is now. 25 kilo, 29 kilobytes. Okay. So that's pretty small now. Right, so we're, we are now halfway there. We have the data in a, we have the tabular data now. We have the information we need. Now we need to map it. So we've got to find some geometries. So what we've got to figure out is what are these codes? It says area codes here. Figure it out for Bristol. All right, so Bristol, this code. Let's find out what that means. So UK, Bristol, find that postcode, local authority boundary. Okay, local authority, population change, postcodes in Bristol. It's definitely not a postcode, I know that. Well, postcodes in Bristol start BS, BS1, BS2, BS through to 32. Um, okay, so local authority. So, where is it? Right, there's one there. So, Bristol is a local authority. So, UK admin administrative. Let's put that wrong again. Um, local authority. Administrative geography. All right, let's see if we can get schooled. Let's get some learning from ONS. Of all the open data sites in the UK, the ONS one's pretty cool, actually. They've got some very, uh, some very nice maps um, for some of their data. But the ONS doesn't do property price stuff, I believe. Digital boundaries, National for Office statistics, BC, BU, generalized 500 meters, availability from the Open Geography portal. Please say that isn't where we've just been and all the data's broken. It's loading, it's loading. Come on, come on, data gods. All right, here we go. Wards, parishes, parishes, local authority districts, 2022 shapefile. This looks promising. And we are local authority layer boundaries. Full resolution, full resolution, generalized to 20 meters. I think we're making progress. All right, this looks good, right? There's Bristol. Let's zoom into Bristol and see if the codes match. So there's Bristol here. E06, a load of zeros, 23. E06, load of zeros, 23. Bang, we've got the right data. Now, 
CSV, KML, shapefile, 4.6, right, right. Before we click this button, let's all do a, let's do a prayer to the open data gods. Please make this file available and don't show me a broken link. Ooh, <laughs> we've got the data, people. We've got the data. How long was that? I feel like I've been going around in circles for 10 minutes trying to find this. Absolute joke, right? We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Let's, let's open this up and see if it actually does what it says on the tin. All right, we're gonna let's put this in a folder because my downloads folder is getting messy. We will say let's just <laughs> the data, <laughs> like rubbish name I know. All right, close. All right, so the data, shape file, okay, reasonable size. Let's open it up in QGIS. All right, drum roll, please. Okay, so that looks like the right data. Blah blah blah. Something about the uh, thing. You like my black background? <laughs> I'm all about the dark themes and everything I can do. QGIS, you need a like, full dark theme. Maybe there is a dark theme for it. If somebody knows how we can set Q QGIS up in dark theme, ping me in the comment below. I would love to know. All right, so we have the data. So for those of you, a lot of you have done data joins a million times before. Let me explain to everybody else who's watching that's never done this, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Okay, so... This is a data set now that contains the geometry. The geometry are these outlines that you see for the places we're talking about. So um, I can press this button here and I can click on there and we can see this is the city of Bristol. And the data contains nothing about price, uh, house prices. Okay, this isn't house price data. It's just boundary data. Um, and so I can click on a feature and see the information or we can press this open up in a table and we can see a table of all of the, the data here. Okay, so here's the data that I just got from, which website was it? It's the um, statisticsgov.uk geo portal. Oh my God, that's an Esri logo in the corner there. Like, boo. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not that anti Esri, but come on, UK. You can't, you know, can't, you, can't you make your own portal? ONS has an awesome portal. I'm pretty sure that's not based on Esri technology. Can't you borrow from them? Anyway. Right, back to QGIS. Um, yeah, that was the table. So we've got this table view here. And so what we can see is we have this code here, which contains the same information that's in our spreadsheet. And we're going to use that code to join. So what we can do is you can see here we've got city of Bristol. Let's just, so what's the top? So the top record in here, um, We've got like Aberdeen, Aberdeen City, S12. The S probably means Scotland. I guess E is England. 12, load of zeros, 33. So if we go in here and we look for Aberdeen, City of Aberdeen, Scotland, 12, load of zeros, 33. So what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to tell QGIS to look at the column in the uh, shapefile that contains the geometry with all of those codes and then look at the spreadsheet that contains all of those codes and look for matches and join them together into one data set. All right. So to do that in um, QGIS, it's, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, so what we need to do first is we need to upload our spreadsheet into QGIS and come in here, delimited text. I choose the file. That was the one, wasn't it? Average prices, 2022, um, October areas. Okay, that's the one. I'm going to add it in here. We have to select this no geometry one here because this is just a this is a CSV file. It doesn't contain any geometry. Some CSV files can contain um, points, like a lat long to show you where a point is, but this doesn't. So we now know that we want to join the area code, okay, that the area code column in the spreadsheet to the lad 22 CD column in the data. Um, custom field prefix okay now <laughs> this this is an interesting button here i remember this because you're going to end up when it does the join it's going to give you some like really really crazy column names um so we're just gonna we're gonna put a <laughs> it's gonna append to make it unique it's gonna append something to the beginning so maybe we'll just put join underscore i think you just like underscores okay right so we're going to hit apply so we now we have this join so we now have this average price monthly change 
uh, and then um, a lot of other junk region names. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I want to clean this data up a bit. So how do I delete? I'm going to delete some of these columns. So this one's stored to an actual file, not in memory. So I should be able to go and delete these surplus to requirements names. We'll, we'll keep that lad 22 one in there for the moment, just to, because I don't want to make that mistake I made before. Shape, 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 uh, join. Oh, no, we want the date. Average price, annual change. Right, so save. I think we now have the data. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move into map stack. So let's hit the create map button and we are going to uh, create a map. Uh, we're actually using the old map stack uh, map creator interface here. We've got a new cool one on the way. So UK area house price is 2022, 25 megs. So which properties are we going to use in the map? I think we're going to use all of them. Now and we're going to put, call that area code. And then these ones here, we're just going to, let's get rid of the underscore goals, get rid of the join, annual change, average price, take, monthly change, and it's not region, it's area. We'll call it area, I think that's a nice right. So there we go. Updated all of those. So we've got this little quote for you here at the top. A good property name can be understood by everyone. So an example of a good one, average population. Bad. Abju underscore pop. That's bad. Okay, so which one's going to be the title? The area name will be the, the title of each of the features. Do any of the properties contain averages? Yeah, the average price is definitely an average. Clues in the name. Percentages, annual change and monthly change. Are those percentages or are they real term value 0 0.4 14 20 21 yeah they're not they're not money values they are definitely percentages so oh, where's my browser so that's a percentage that's a percentage um, number range properties so which ones are numbers which ones could be displayed in a quantity legend all three of them and finally category no date is definitely not a category for this map let's hit next so what's the coverage area we're covering the uk what's the feature type we're calling them areas. I'm not going to call them what they call them super annuated authorities or that's too much of a mouthful. We'll stick with area map topic, house price, property price, property and house, the same thing. I don't know. Property price map continue. And what should we make the default visualization? Um, average price. I think that'd be cool. Right. Let's see if this works and see what this map looks like. There we go. We have a map. So now we can see that data uh, mapped by house price. We can see the darker purple colors are for the higher prices and the lighter ones are for the lower prices. We can see this huge variation in the UK for average uh, property prices goes all the way from £119,000 all the way to like, you know, nearly £1.4 million. So there's a lot of variation in the UK. Actually, let's have a little bit of fun with this map. Right? Let's, let's see where the cheapest and most expensive places are. So we're going to hit filter here. And we're going to say, right, I want to see all the places in the UK where the average price is. Right, let's start with the, let's go with the lowest first. Let's start low. So we've got 100, about 119,000 is the lowest. So let's say 130, one, two, three. Okay, so I'm looking for a budget house in the UK. Where do I go? Okay, so there are only two places in the UK that are less than that. Um, so we can see the results in a, in a table here. And we can say they, oh, there are three actually, Burnley, um, Hindburn, and uh, Iverclyde. Okay, so Burnley, I know where Burnley is. So here's Burnley, it's in the, in the north of England. And uh, we can click on, oh no, they're next to each other. Burnley, Hydeburn. Okay, so Burnley, the, so Burnley is obviously the cheapest, 119 thousand uh pounds um in burnley um <laughs> let's let's go to google let's go look at street view let's see what let's see what one hundred nineteen thousand pounds gets you uh in the uk so burnley let's go to burnley right there's burnley let's uh let's go into a random area let's just drop a random pin we're interested in averages here cool okay so there we are burnley so so terraced houses. So this is what we are uh, known in the UK often as a two up, two down. So there'll be two rooms on the first floor, two uh, 
rooms on the uh, upper floor. Um, so you can see the rooms are all kind of in a in a in a grid system. Um, yeah, so we can see there seems to be a lot of abandoned, a lot of abandoned houses, which is never a, never a good sign. There's some sort of shutters on various places here, uh, boarded up. Okay, so yeah, looks like Burnley Burnley's a place that's a uh, little bit down on its luck at the moment. So that's one hundred and nineteen thousand pounds. So um, and the other one, where, where was it? It was in Scotland, wasn't it? So Scotland. Um, Inverclyde, I'm not so familiar with that, but that looks like a, a very rural um, area um, to the west of Glasgow. Um, okay, so let's go to the other end of the spectrum now. So there's some houses in the UK where the average is over 1.3 million. That's ridiculous. Um, let's see where those are. So let's go into the filter again. Let's change the filter. I want to see houses that are greater. You know, I want to see where the ballers live. So 1.3 billion, like we already know it's going to be in London, don't we? Do we really even need to, let's see where in London. Okay, so here we are in London. That's one area. Kensington and Chelsea. Yeah, I, I could have, I could have guessed that. Uh, if you ever had a chance to visit lovely houses around there. Actually, I'll show you. Let's have a look. We had a look at Burnley. Let's go and have a look at uh, Chelsea and Kensington. Chelsea and our Royal Borough. That's when you know you're in a nice area in the UK, when it when the a name of the area starts with Royal, the Royal Borough of Chelsea and uh, Kensington. So here it is here. Uh, so let's zoom in here. Let's drop Mr. Pinman. Let's see what you get for 1.3, what pile you get for 1.3 million in London. I get church. Let's swing the camera around. Oh, there you go. That's what you get. You get your massive townhouse. You've got your Bentley parked on the drive. Very nice. So remember 1.3 is just the average, the average. So that means 50% of the houses in this area cost more than 1.3 million. Okay. Which is amazing. Um, these kind of Georgian townhouses in the UK, um, this is two houses. So for those of you in the U S we like to join houses together a lot. So this is two houses. This side is one house. This side is the other. So you only get half. That's what you get for 1.3 million, not all of it. And, I imagine these houses, these won't be 1.3 million. I know London, these will be some of the larger ones in this area. These will probably be, I would say, 10 million pounds. At a guess, hazard a guess. Let's, let's see if we can find some smaller ones um, in that area. Let's pick another random street. Yeah, so this is probably what you're gonna be getting in this area for like 1.3 million, like a, a, a terrace townhouse or an apartment. Okay, that's what, that's what you'll be working with. Very expensive part of of the country okay that's pretty cool all right so we've seen the most expensive we've seen the cheapest um, now let's take a look all right so we've got two other things here we've got annual change so let's see where the change is so for people that are familiar with the uk we can already see that most of the most the most expensive housing in the uk is situated in london and around london and the south and generally speaking things to get tend to get more reasonable um, the further north you get there's a few outliers around there but that's the kind of general rule of thumb in the uk this area down here is quite rural. Most of Wales is quite rural. There are the east is Euro rural. Um, most of the population in the UK is in is in this window here. The, the you know you could call it like the belly. That's where most people live. Um, the vast majority of the population. So let's see where the most change has been happening. Okay, so the change in the last year goes from some places have gone up thirty seven percent. Some have lost seven percent. Okay, so this is an interesting map because this map at first glance looks inverse of the property value. We can see the places that have lost the most money are in London. Okay, so the most expensive property, the ones that have lost the most. So we've still got Chelsea and Kensington highlighted. How much is Chelsea and Kensington? So, okay, so 7.96. So it looks like Chelsea and Kensington, Kensington and Chelsea actually hold two records. It's the most expensive area in the entire country. And it's also the area that lost the most seven percent in the last year which is quite amazing so two records um, for that area now i think what was a big trend during covid uh, was with all the work from home things there was a big thing of of people not having to go into the office so moving selling their expensive city properties and moving to the the greener areas of the uk so uh, uh, not only the green areas the most picturesque so we can see here like south devon north devon um this is like the cotswolds up here so areas of like astounding natural beauty where you can go and get some like beautiful cottages and things like wow 
what's that, what's up here you know the, the islands off of the shetland islands the shetland islands of annual change 18 percent. so there's probably a lot of people during covid you know they said right you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna bug out i'm going off grid i'm gonna go and live in the shetland islands maybe that was a good call monthly yeah, i don't know what this means this probably jumps up and down a lot anyway i think we'll i think we'll we're going to wind up the wind the live stream now i think it was cool i showed you the process of going finding some data we realized what an absolute headache that entire process is uh, many parts of the time and how you can see the process that i just went through for i'm somebody who makes maps all the time i'm i'm very computer literate i'm a software engineer and it was still difficult even for me we're like an hour and 12 minutes into this it took me an hour basically to prepare that map that's too long but now now this map now exists on Mapstack. It's on our staging server, but let's just pretend we're live. It's in a few weeks' time where Mapstack's live. I've now mapped this, and now it's available to everyone forever for free. They can just uh, access that map inside the uh, Mapstack system. And once this system's live and we start getting indexed by Google, what I would hope to have is in future, you, most people, they're just going to go in and go, right, UK house prices by area map. Okay, they're going to go bang. And then top of the list in here, you're going to see map stack and you're going to have the, the, a map with that detailed uh, UK open data contained in it. There's some maps here already. We'll see what they're like. There might be already be some cool maps with this data. There might be. Let's have a look. So let's see what the current top result in the UK is. OK, it's a heat map. Um, it's a heat map. It doesn't tell me. I can't. OK, I can scroll it. It doesn't tell me when this data's from. It seems to be a list of points. You know, it's, okay, maybe I'm a bit biased here, but I think the map we just made was far superior to that. Okay, so yeah, there you go. There's the process. So our goal at MapStack is we envisage a future where all of the world's open data is available for free for everyone in a very simplistic and easy to use format. Um, we want to improve the data literacy of humanity by doing this. This is our mission. This is our goal. I hope you guys are all going to join us for the journey. Okay. I'm signing off the live stream now. Peace.